Welcome to Focal Point Church's online service. We're so excited to be able to worship together with you. So let's rise to our feet. Let's put the coffee pot down and let's turn to your neighbor. Tell them it's time to worship the Lord. It's time to seek God. And we believe that something great is going to happen today. So let's worship the Lord together. Thank you so much, everybody. Praise the Lord today for joining us for Focal Point Church in worship. If you don't mind, and I don't care if you're in your living room or wherever you are, stand to your feet and let's bless the name of the Lord together in unity today.
Come on, let's sing this together. The head that once was crowned with thorns is crowned with glory now. The Savior knelt to wash our feet. And now at His feet we together and victory is won. Oh God, we know. But soon the soldiers watched in vain was borrowed for three days. His body there would not remain. Our God has robbed the Yeah. 
spirit, I will rise from the ashes of defeat. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. In your name I come alive to declare your victory. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. Praise the Lord, everyone. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for being a part of our worship experience. And I would like to say happy Mother's Day to all of the moms out there. We love you so much. We are so thankful for all of our moms. Moms, we want you to know from the bottom of our hearts that we are so grateful for everything that you do for us. Thank you for every sacrifice that you make. Thank you for waking up early and going to bed late. Thank you for making sure that we are so taken care of. Thank you for taking care of us when we've been sick. Thank you for encouraging us when we've been discouraged. Thank you for being our rock. Thank you for being a, a place of warmth and a place of covering, a place of love, a place of protection. Moms, thank you for being so nurturing. We are so very grateful. I know there are many of us out there who you may not have your biological mom, but maybe you have a God mom. Maybe it was your grandmother. Maybe it was a family friend who was a mother figure to you. But whoever it is, I want you to I want to make sure that you take an opportunity today to give them a call if you're not with them, to give them a hug if you're with them. As a matter of fact, to all the kids, if your mom is in the room, go over and give her a kiss right now and love your mom and tell her happy Mother's Day if you haven't already. And because we want to take this moment to celebrate all of the moms. Moms, you are so special. Where would the world be without the women of God, without the women in our lives? Where would we be today if it was not for moms? And I know that this day can be hard for some people because uh, you may not have your mom. Maybe your mom has passed away or maybe you didn't have a relationship with your mother growing up. But whatever the case is, my friends, I want you to know that the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He's a friend to the friendless. He's a mother to the motherless and a father to the fatherless. And whatever your situation may be, I want you to know that the Lord is with you, that he will comfort you and find a way to celebrate a mom today. I'm telling you, that'll even help you and encourage you today. I want to have just a quick word of prayer for all of the moms before we continue on in our service. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for all of the moms out there. Thank you, God, for each and every mom who sacrificed, who's gone above and beyond the call of duty. Lord, thank you for the women in our lives who have taken care of us, who have nurtured us, who have, who have been the rock for us. Thank you, Lord, for all of the women out there, God, who have uh, caused us to go forth, who've been a force of encouragement in our lives. And we praise you, God, that this is a beautiful day. Lord, for some people, it's a challenging day because they may not have their moms. They miss their moms. Lord, would you comfort them? Would you show them that you're with them? We praise you and thank you, God, that you have not left us, that you have not abandoned us, God. So would you just comfort our hearts today, Lord? We love you and we pray a blessing for, on all of the moms out there in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And because this is a, a very special day, uh, we've put together uh, a presentation from our Acting Up ministry. So it's just a little something uh, for you to enjoy. And so without further ado, I would like to present to you Miss Tammy Windsor from Acting Up. The Proverbs 31 woman, the wife of noble character, brings him good, not harm, works with eager hands, gets up while it's still dark, provides food, work vigorously. Oh, oh, she's clothed with strength and dignity and can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household, does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Oh, I like that part. <laughs> um, but many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her the reward she has earned and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. 
That's it. That's it. Today is the day. Today is the day I become the Proverbs 31 woman. I am going to be the best mom I can be, the best wife. I'm going to cook healthy meals for my family. I'm going to take care of everybody so well. Oh, yes, yes. And my kids, oh, yeah, my kids, they will arise and call me blessed. Yes, they will. Yes, oh, yes. Okay, let's do this, God. We got this. All right. Kids, it's time for breakfast. I'm making you your favorite. Blueberry pancakes. <laughs> rise and shine and give God the glory, glory. Rise and shine and give God the glory, glory. Rise and shine and give God the glory, glory. For children of the Lord. Breakfast. Run. <laughs> <laughs> breakfast now oh proverbs 31 ah oh, proverbs 31 woman yes yes Lord. hi finally hello here's your breakfast yet no they're not raisins they're blueberries what do you mean they taste funny they're whole wheat they're healthier for you eat up and besides you've always loved blueberries oh here comes your dad Hi, honey. Oh, don't you look handsome today? Just one moment. I made the perfect breakfast for you this morning. So just one moment. Let me get it. Wait, where are you going? Well, I thought, but, well, are you going to be home for dinner? But, well, okay. Bye. I love you. Oh my goodness. Kids, I've got to get you to school. We've got to go. We've got to go. Oh my goodness. I've got so much to do today. I've got to get the dog to the vet and the groceries. I've got to throw in a load of laundry. Oh, I forgot about those cookies that I've got to bake for the PTA meeting, which means I've got to go back to the school for a PTA meeting. Okay. And somewhere in there, somewhere in there, I will make it to the gym if it's the last thing that I do. Yes. Okay, kids. Let's go, 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 go. <sighs> oh, man. I don't know. This this math problem, I'm sorry, but I have never, ever seen math done this way before. I, I don't know. It sure has changed since I was a kid. I, I think you're going to have to wait for your dad to get home. I'm sorry. Go brush your teeth, and when your dad gets home, he can help you. Hey, turn off the TV. Have you even completed your homework? Excuse me, I'm talking to you. Don't you roll your eyes at me, young lady. Don't you march off. Don't you slam the door. Oh. What is wrong with that child? What is her problem? And why won't she communicate with me? What is her problem? And does she have a problem with her relationship with her mother? Oh my goodness. I'm her mother. Lord, I can't even make it through one day as the Proverbs 31 woman. My, my kids are disobedient. They, they aren't getting their homework done. They're not listening to me, Lord. I can't communicate with them. My husband is never home. He's working so many hours. We hardly ever see each other. I had to take the dog to the vet. I had to have his pump, stomach pumped today. Ugh. Apparently he swallowed a foreign object. I thought for sure that object would go, the Legos would go straight through him. <sighs> and the cookies? Burnt. Oh. But of course, apparently they tasted perfectly fine for me to eat the entire dozen as I sat in my yoga pants and never made it to the gym. 
And then I'm late for the PTA meeting. And what happens? I get stuck with the worst job. Tear down. <laughs> I hate tear down. <laughs> Lord, I need you. Oh, Lord, I need you. I cannot do this anymore. I need you in my marriage. I need you to help me. Give me the words to speak to my children, Lord. Help me to be a better mother. Lord, help me to take better care of myself and my family, Lord. Father, there's no way. I cannot do this. I can't do it in my own strength anymore. I give it all to you, Lord. You are the only way that I will ever come close to being the Proverbs 31 woman and to becoming the person that you called me to be. I'm a child of God. I'm an heir to the kingdom. I am a princess. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for always giving me another opportunity to become the person you called me to be and to take a step into my destiny. Honey, I I'm up here, honey. I'll be right down. Thank you, Lord. I hope that you enjoyed that skit put on by our very own Tammy Windsor. And once again, we want to say happy Mother's Day to all of the moms out there. We love you so much. We have just a few announcements for you. The first announcement is about our drive-in prayer. Join us this Tuesday, May 12th at 6.30 p.m. right here at our church for our drive-in prayer service. We would like for you to bring your friends and bring your family and once the service begins, you can choose to stay in your car and listen to the, to the prayer service, or you can stand outside of your vehicle, but next to your vehicle while the service is going on. We will have speakers to project the sound and also an FM tuner where you can tune into a radio station and hear the service through your car stereo. So we can't wait to see you at our prayer service. Once again, it's this Tuesday night, May 12th at 6.30 p.m. Our second announcement is about our Revive Orlando ministry. My friends, we sincerely want to help. We want to be a blessing to our congregation and to those who are in need. And so let me share with you what we have going on. We have an initiative that we are beginning this week to help care for our church family, for those who may be facing various challenges. Maybe you're facing challenges financially or in your health or in your family due to this COVID-19 crisis. Whatever it is, we want to be as of much of assistance as we possibly can. So over the last couple of weeks, our Revive Orlando team has been working on this initiative. And so, if you would like to request assistance, you can go to our website and click resources under the COVID-19 tab. You can fill out a short form and let us know how we can help you. Now, if you would like to give towards this initiative, you can go to our giving tab and use the drop down to give towards the Revive Orlando. All of the resources and funds will go towards helping people in need in our church. And our last announcement is this, is we are going to have communion next Sunday. Yes, we're going to have communion next Sunday, and you will have communion in your homes with your families. So I want you to go out this week and prepare for communion, and all you will need is store-bought crackers and some grape juice. And we're going to have communion during our Sunday service. God bless you. You know, one of the most common verses that we hear during this time is the one that says that God loves a cheerful giver. And I think if we're honest, there are many times that we can give just simply out of obedience to God, but not out of that cheerful heart. And if we give cheerfully, we give because we remember why we're giving and who we're giving to. 
so whether it's uh, our gifts of our time, gifts of our uh, resources, gifts of our own abilities, that it's an, truly an honor to serve God. It's a truly an honor to give back to God. It's truly an honor to join God where he's at work and with what he's doing. And so as we give today, we want to give a heart that is grateful to be a part of what he's doing in this day and time uh, through our gifts financially. At Focal Point Church, we have a few ways that you can give. You can give through the Focal Point Church app and go through there. You can go online at focalpointchurch.com. You can click the giving tab at the upper right hand corner. Uh, you can give your tithes and offerings or towards Revive Orlando to help with the initiative that Pastor Nick just mentioned. Uh, or you can send in a check by mail to the address that is right there on the screen. You can give that way. We're going to pray uh, and then Pastor Mark's going to come up in just a moment uh, to give the word. So Lord, we thank you. Uh, for every good gift that you've given us. God, we thank you for the, uh, the honor it is to be able to give back to serve your kingdom, to see your kingdom advance. God, to see people being taken care of, to see uh, lives being transformed and changed, to see your truth going forth in this day and time. Lord, we wanna be a part of what you're doing, not just our own things, not just our own ministries, not just our own initiatives, but God, we wanna be a part of what you're doing in this day and time, where you're speaking, where you're changing, and where you're transforming lives. And so, Lord, it is truly an honor to give and to be a part of what you're doing in this day and time. In Jesus' name, amen. And now here's Pastor Mark. Amen. It's great to be with you all, especially on this Mother's Day. And we you just want to join in with what's been shared about so thankful for our mothers, whether they're uh, the mother that helped raise us or whether it's the mother in the house helping to take care of the children. I, I hope we all appreciate. I honestly think that a mother does so, so much and we need to take an opportunity to appreciate them. I have something else in my heart to appreciate and it's all of our small group leaders and co-leaders. We've cared for nearly 300 people through those leaders during this time and we've had so many meetings with them, so many discussions, so much one-on-one -on -one, as well as group times. And I really thank you, um, our small group leaders, our growth group leaders and co-leaders and apprentices for what you're doing to help be the church. And I believe that God is growing us as this people to really see church is not listening to someone talk about God. It is about being Christ's hands and feet with other people. So thank you so much uh, for all you're doing. I, um, we've been in this series talking about what now, because we know that so much is going on uh, and that it's so unusual or abnormal that we're really needing to go before God and ask God, what do I do? How do I go through this? And I'm very, very well aware that there's a lot of pressure that we come under. Sometimes it's spiritual. You don't even know what the reasons are. You can just feel there's tension and you can feel that in relationships, you can feel that in decision making, you can feel that even in navigating the day-to-day -day situations. And so I've really been, uh, so we have the practical things and then there is the God has stopped the world and there are big things that God is wanting to do. So you have those two kinds of things going on and you're like, God, how do I not miss you while I'm going through this much pressure? while I'm going through this much unknown. So everything that we've been praying and doing is to try to get a fresh, clear word from God so that we can share it with you and release things during the week to help encourage you so that even in the midst of refining pressure that we can be in step and in tune with God, amen. So today, as we was praying, it was really asking God, what now, God? How do we go through this season, this time, this crisis? And one of the things that God has really laid upon my heart is that really we are under pressure. There is many things that are in front of us, some that are unknowns. And so there's uncertainty, there's confusion, and there's like, will I be hired back? What do we do uh, if, if the school, you know, doesn't do this or what do we do? There's so many things we just don't even know what to do with that can be scary, confusing and difficult. So how do I make decisions? How do I find God's will? 
how do I really begin to tap into the way through this stuff? So today I really want to look at how to really walk through all the uncertainty, difficulty, and pressure we have God's way. Because it really is two ways. I said this a few weeks ago, that in this season, we're either going to begin to go deeper and deeper into trust or God, or we're going to get deeper into stress. Because there is too much pressure out there. It's either going to press us into the Lord, or we're going to begin to get stressed. So I really want to look at how are we going to walk this, and really what I'm just entitling this is walking by faith and not by sight. Because there really are two ways. We can look at all the things we're facing out there and we can turn into our human thinking and try to get our human wisdom and our human perspective or we can begin to turn to God to get God's wisdom and God's point of view. You see, my perspective is limited. I don't know what tomorrow holds. I don't know how long this will last. I don't know fully all that God is doing. But God's perspective is whole and complete. So we can walk by what we see, what we think, or we can walk by God's wisdom. So I really want to pray as we go into this that we're going to let God begin to help us, enable us, empower us to go through all the things in front of us in a different way than we did before this. So let me just take a moment. Father, in Jesus' name, we ask you to give us eyes to see and ears to hear. We are not victims to the challenges that are out there. We have resources from heaven because your spirit dwells within us and because we have a direct link with you that we can come before you, hear from you, that we do not have to walk around as the blind leading the blind. We do not have to walk around as people that don't know you because we know that you care for us. So God, teach us how to walk in a higher level of trust and faith and not in fear and panic. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Now, a lot of people treat faith like it's fantasy. And so a lot of times they will act as though walking by faith is turning off your brain and walking in kind of a fantasy world. And they will say, but reality is, and they're talking about reality is what they see with their eyes. And I really want to say that is a very simplistic, low view of understanding how to walk through life. And I want to try to raise it up to a place that we can see how to walk through this God's way. First of all, let's ask the question, what is faith? In Romans chapter 1, verses 17, it says, The good news tells us how God makes us right in his sight. This is accomplished from start to finish by faith. And as the scripture says, it is through faith that a righteous person has life. From beginning to end, the way you came to Christ was by faith. The way you came into the things that Christ offers you from the very beginning all the way to the very end is by faith. If you're going to finish well, it's going to be because you walk by faith. Everything that you take possession of that God offers you is by faith. Faith is not a feeling. Faith is not wishes. Faith is not just kind of hoping. Faith is confidence and trust in the person of Jesus Christ and trusting his word and his ways. Now, when you say, what is faith? There's many aspects of faith. It's many multi-dimensioned, just like love is or other things. So I wanna talk about one aspect of faith. One aspect of faith that I wanna look at today, faith is seeing from God's point of view. Like I said, we can look at something from a human point of view or we can begin to see it from God's point of view, which is a totally different picture. And faith is beginning to walk from God's point of view. Amen. Amen. God has the whole picture. God knows from beginning to end. He knows why he made you. He knows why he put you in this time in history. He knows what gifts he's deposited in you. He knows what weapons the enemies formed against you. He knows what things need to build into your life so that you will not give into the pressure that's going to come. He knows what things are going to be released, what wisdom you need that'll help you see how to go through that. He knows what aspects of his own character to reveal to you, to encourage you, to strengthen you. God has a whole view. He knows what keys to release to unlock the things that are in front of you. He knows what grace to give to empower you to go through the difficulties that you're going to have to go through. God knows all of that. But our human view doesn't know any of that. 
So it's limited. And so we really walk through life in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. It says, walk by faith, not by sight. He's saying there's two ways to do life. You walk by faith or you walk by sight. When you walk by sight, you're literally saying, I'm looking at life through a lens that doesn't have God's point of view in it. So I'm looking with my eyes, I'm looking with my experience, I'm looking through my understanding. So it's limited. It's absence of the factor, factoring in God. Factoring in God's view, God's purpose, God's character, his promises. It's not hearing from God's perspective. It's not weighing his wisdom. So a lot of times people will say, this is what reality is. But what they're calling reality is absent God and all that he has to offer if we're looking at something. And so we look at it, it's discouraging, it's fearful, it's difficult, it's unknown. We've not factored God in, we've not heard from God, so we're looking at that and we're saying that's reality. And I say, no, that's not reality. That's your limited perspective. You're only seeing in part. You're not seeing the whole picture. The other way to walk, the Bible mentioned, is to walk by faith. To walk by faith means seeing God's point of view. The Bible says in John 14, verse 6, Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. Jesus says, I am the truth. Truth is a person. It's not a concept. The Holy Spirit was given to us to lead us into all truth. You see, we do not know the truth of a situation until we've heard from truth. If we walk by faith, that means that we're knowing we need to hear from truth of what's going on, what he's wanting to do. If all I walk by is sight, then I'm walking with a limited human point of view. And we're going to miss God, we're going to miss his wisdom, and we're going to miss his perspective. And the church in this day and hour, in this wake-up time, needs to start walking by faith instead of walking by sight. We've been walking by sight too much, and it's not causing anybody out there to be drawn to us. We need to be a light in a difficult time. We need to show that there is a way to navigate rough waters. There's a way to navigate extreme pressure, and we don't have to be in panic. We don't have to be all alert because we're learning how to put our eyes upon God and how to be led of God so that we can go forward through this time. Amen. If we are going to walk by faith, you've got to fight the fight of faith. Your faith is opposed by an enemy. And he's trying to flood you with doubt, discouragement, fears, all these things to stir up your emotions so that you stay in sight walking instead of faith walking. Because when your emotions are being provoked, it's hard to quiet them and hear from God so you don't and all you walk by is the limited human perspective that you have. You only see in part. And so you realize if I'm going to walk by faith, I've got to calm down. I've got to calm down. I've got to lay my burdens at Christ's feet. I've got to trust that he is who he says he is. He won't leave me. He loves me. He's going to lead me through. And I've got to release those burdens and believe that he is my shepherd. He is good. That he cannot fail. That he surrounds me with unfair. It's like I pray into that place to trust him that I can begin to hear from heaven and know what he wants and let him lead me. The most repeated phrase that Jesus said in the New Testament was this. Let him that has ears to hear, hear. Let him that has eyes to see, see. Jesus was teaching us that we don't just have physical eyes. We also have spiritual eyes. And that there are things to see that we can't see with our physical eyes. And we're not just looking with what's going on. So if we just walk by sight, then we're not walking with spiritual eyes. And all we're going to have is a limited human view. And one of the things that I had to recognize of myself, my human view is only a piece. It's a part. It's a very small piece of understanding. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18, the Apostle Paul said, Having the eyes of your heart enlightened that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inherent, 
inheritance in the saints. Paul is saying, you have spiritual eyes, and I'm praying God will enlighten them so that you will know there is a lot more you have than you see. There are many other factors engaged here, and I'm praying you can begin to see them so that you can begin to take hold of them, so you can begin to stand up, so that you can know which way to go. And that's what I'm praying, is that we're not going to go through this time walking by sight, that we're going to begin to spend the time to seek the Lord so that our eyes can be enlightened and we can see that there is more and that God has not forsaken us, that God has, we're not orphans here trying to find our way through. We've got a father who loves us. All through the Bible, you see this place where people's eyes were open. You remember Hagar, she was the one that Abraham had taken as a really a substitute to get the promises of God. And he brought her into his family. He had a child with her. And then his wife, Sarah, got jealous of her. And so they told her to leave. She goes out in the desert. She believes she's going to die. She sits there under a tree with her son. And she believes all hope is lost. And then she prays a prayer. And then it says, then God opened her eyes. And she saw a well. She didn't see it before, but God opened her eyes and she saw a well. What about the time that Elisha was there and there was an army that came and surrounded them and Elisha's servant got so scared and he was not sure what to do. And Elisha prayed, God, open his eyes that he can see that those that are with us are greater than those that are against us. And God opened his eyes and he saw that they were surrounded by angels with flaming swords and all of this and peace came upon him. I'm telling you, God can can open your eyes that the stress you feel can begin to calm because you can realize that God's not left you, that God is with you, that God will make a way. He'll speak a word like, trust me, I've got this. I'm going to lead you into the next level. He speaks little words sometimes that give you the courage, the perspective that you can see this from a whole different angle than you saw this before. That he reminds you of a promise that he gave a long ago and he's saying, this is the time we're going into that. I'm telling you, he can release things that your physical eyes can't see. And when God releases Leases those, there's a faith that undergirds you, and you realize we can do this. Without those eyes, you tremble because you can't see hope, you can't see grace, you can't see the way, and you just feel weighed down. Friends, we need to stop walking by sight. We've got to start letting Him lead us by faith. Amen. You, you see it through the Bible. There was a time when a giant was facing the children of Israel. The army looks at it and they see a giant and said they trembled with fear. But David didn't see what they saw. He saw the God that was with them, that covenant themselves. And he stood before that giant and said, you will go down this day. You see, he saw differently. The disciples, they're with Jesus. He calm seas. He multiplies bread and fish and loaves. He's doing all of this. He does all this. And it says they don't understand until after the resurrection, God opened their eyes and now they see. You see, we need to stop telling God how to solve us. And we need to stop saying, God, how do you see this situation? We're telling God like he needs orders from us. He doesn't need orders. We need to come and position ourselves to hear from him, to receive from him, because he wants to open our eyes. There's more going on than we see. And he wants to show us those things. There's a lot more than our physical eyes can see. And we need God's perspective. That's what it means to walk by faith. So I want to go through this. What happens if we walk by sight? And then what happens if we walk by faith? First of all, if we walk by sight, in Numbers 13 and 14, it tells the story of where Moses led the children of Israel to the promised land. And they came up to the promised land and he sent 12 spies in to spy the land. Now remember, God had done 10 plagues in Egypt. He had parted the sea. They came through. God destroyed the superpower of the day. He brought water. He gave food. He took care of them for about two years. And then they come to the promised land. And they send the spies and two come back from their trip and say, it's, it is as God has said. It's a beautiful land. It's a rich land. It's a wonderful land. And we can take that land because God is with us. And 10 other spies came out and they said, we can't do it. They, you know, we, we, we're going to, they're, they're big, they're giants. We're like nothing compared to them. We're never going to be able to make this. And they were sitting there and you realize that when you walk by sight, first of all, it exaggerates your difficulties. 
God has delivered these people from the superpower of the day. Now they're facing a local tribe and they're saying we can't do it. Come on. God had, he had parted a sea and now they can't remember the God they even serve. They're focused on their problems and they're saying there's just no way. This can't happen. Many of us have forgotten that he is the same God that has taken you through those things in the past and that this is not too difficult for him. They're sitting there and they're saying in Numbers 13, verse 27 and 28, said the people that dwell in the land are strong. Their cities are fortified. They're very large. They we can't do this. They go to the next one in verse 13, I mean, chapter 13, 31 through 32, said, we're not able to go against these people. They're stronger than us. The more they're looking at walking by sight, the more their fear grows, the more they begin to feel. You realize fear and negativity is like this virus. It spreads, it's contagious. And when we let fear in, it doesn't stay strong stagnant or small it keeps growing and growing until we choose to put our eyes upon the Lord and walk in faith this negative report just began to grow until the whole place they were excited to go to the promised land they had spent two years marching there and they get there and then they say now we can't do it and everybody gives up now think about this think about this 40 years pass until all those people 20 years and old, older die. And then they go in with Joshua leading now to Jericho. And they go to a lady's house and she hides them. And they said, what is happening here? And she goes, all of the people in the city are terrified of you. We're terrified of you because we heard what God did through you in Egypt. 40 years have passed. Do you realize they looked at the situation when Moses was with them? They said, they're big, they're fortified, we can't do it, it'll never work. They were lied to. Forty years passed, the people are still scared of them because they heard of the plagues, they heard of the sea. You realize when you look through sight, you're being deceived. You're being deceived. The next when you walk by sight, you underestimate your abilities. In Numbers 13, 33, it says, they said, we seem like grasshoppers. It's in, they, we, we feel like grasshoppers. We look like grasshoppers to them. I mean, they, they, they project that the people see them as grasshoppers, even though they never heard that. They just imagine the way and they look at us, we're going to look like grasshoppers. We feel like grasshoppers. We begin, when you walk without seeing from God's perspective, you underestimate yourself. I want to say that so clear. The enemy spends the entirety of your life communicating a negative narrative about you telling you negative things about you, about your future, and about God, and about other people. He's constantly trying to tear you down. You can't do it. You're not loved. There's no hope. He spins that negative narrative. So when you're looking at a situation and you're not getting God's perspective, then your view of yourself is going to be diminished. And either you overcompensate or you're too afraid and you realize, I need God's perspective or I'm not going to have the courage, or I'm not going to see how to do this. And you realize how vital it is that we see and hear from the Lord. If we don't, we walk by sight, we're going to underestimate, we're going to undercut ourselves. We're not going to take the advantage of what God's going to open in front of us. Third, when we walk by sight, we get discouraged and we grumble. Numbers 14, 1 says, Then all the congregation raised a loud voice, and the people wept that night. When we listen to the negative view, it builds and it builds. We begin to feel hopeless. We begin to feel fearful. We begin to see negative future. We don't see how it's going to change. And then we begin to gripe. We gripe about ourselves, our lives, how bad they are, how terrible it is. We gripe about other people. We gripe about everything. It says in chapter two of, I mean, verse two of chapter 14 that they started grumbling against Moses. They started grumbling against Aaron. Then they started grumbling that they'd ever left Egypt. They start grumbling. When you just begin to let, you walk by sight, fear comes in and it begins to grow until before too long, you begin to work yourself up 
till you get in a frenzy. It's not truth, but it's what's begun to take over in your thinking. And you begin to react to the fear, the hopelessness, the doubts, all these things that have come about. It's not even the truth of your future. It's just what you've allowed yourself work, to be worked up into. Number four, when we walk by sight, we give up and we blame God. Numbers 14 verse three says, why is the Lord bringing us into the land to fall by the sword? Our wives and our little ones become a prey. Would it not be better to go back to Egypt? They're blaming God. They're saying, God, you brought us all the way out here to just die. You, you, you know, you're, and it, and it wasn't the truth. It was a deception that they had come into. I can't tell you how many times I've watched myself and other people work themselves up into fear, begin to believe a lie that the future is dark or it's dreary. They're going to reject me. I might as well leave. They're never, I'm never going to accomplish this. I might as well quit. They do all of this stuff. They work themselves up. They begin to grumble. They begin to lose heart. And then they walk away. And then they act like, God, why didn't you help me? God was right there to help you. But you walked by sight and you lost heart and you walked away. I want to say something. God has a future. He sent a wake up call to the world to wake up his church because God wants to do something on the earth. Hear me. He wants to do something on the earth. If you're called by his name, that includes you. He has a role for you to play and he has things for you to do upon this earth where your life matters and it is to be engaged. But if you don't walk by faith, you're going to walk away from that opportunity, that calling, because you're going to be deceived by the enemy. You're going to get worked up into fear, and then you're going to decide it's never going to work. I might, it's never going to happen, and you'll walk away from the open door that God gives you. That's what they did. They walked away from the open door they were given. Amen. We need to make sure during this time we start walking by faith. Walking by sight is too costly and it's too intense out there to stay in a place of walking by sight. So what happens if we walk by faith, if we get God's perspective? Literally, I'm going to tell you today, some things hit me and they were hard and they were difficult and it began to make me feel frustrated or discouraged. And I stopped and I said, God, what do you want me to do with this? And I got direction and I did it and it turned it around. And I realized I really do need to walk. He said, you need to abide with me. It's not stop by on Sunday and visit. You need to be with me. That's how you're going to get fruit. How do we get God's perspective and walk by faith in the time that's in front of us? If we walk by faith, what happens? We shrink. Faith shrinks our problems. When you see your problem from God's point of view, you're not afraid. You don't feel hopeless. You have courage. You have faith. You, you see a way through. You realize this is not too difficult. There's many ways God will use scripture. God will remind you of things he's brought you through in the past. God will remind you of stories of people of old. God will do many things to give you hope, courage, and faith. He's releasing the grace for you to go through something that you normally on your own could not go through. When you walk by faith, you realize there are things he's releasing to empower you, to envision you, to equip you to walk through this. Genesis 18, 14 says, is anything too hard for the Lord? No, nothing is too hard. Luke 1, 37 says, for nothing will be impossible with God. I used to think it was my job to anticipate my problems and solve my problems. I put all the responsibility on me. All right, well, I need to be prepared for that. This possibly could happen. And I, I would think all the time as I'm going to sleep, as I'm driving, as I had idle time, trying to anticipate, well, that could be a problem. Well, this person could do that. I need to be prepared for that. And I was living as though I had to take care of myself. And God began to show me that I didn't trust him, that I was living a self-reliant life. So I was only seeing what a human could do. And he was calling me to come into a life where I trusted him and I started walking by faith. As I started doing that, it was scary and it was hard because I was used to managing, controlling, but God started taking me to the place that I could learn how to trust him. Now, you got to imagine, I had no clue how to trust him when he started. I had no clue. But he started teaching me how to trust him, 
how to begin to allow him to lead. And it was a step at a time. He would show me when I was dealing with something and raising children, you know, how to, how to begin to stop trying to get through their heads in my power, my wisdom, my way. And he would begin to show me how to pray. And he would say one word or he'd show me one thing and it would change the situation. I'd say, my God, your ways are so much better than my ways. Your ways work. My ways don't work. Then he would deal with finances or he'd deal with ministry. And I started realizing God can begin to deal with things that you never, ever been able to deal with. I would say to you right now, sincerely, there are some things God wants to change in our lives forever. But we've got to start walking by faith. Because the problem is not impossible. The relationship is not impossible. The situation is not hopeless. But you've been trying to manage it instead of trusting and letting God's perspective come. When we walk by faith, it opens the door for miracles. Every time you see in the Bible or in history, whenever there was a miracle, it was because somebody stepped out in faith and believed God. I remember in our church many years ago, there was a single mom who had four kids and she only had several hundred dollars that were coming to her a month. She had no job, she had no education, she had nothing else. And I remember God was leading her to surrender and he spoke to her and he said, I don't want you to look to the government, your parents, any other person for money. I want you to trust me to take care of you. And she stepped across that place to trust God and then God said to her a few days later, Somebody came up, didn't even know what she was praying through, and handed her a blank check and said, make this out for whatever you want. And in that moment, God confirmed, I'm receiving your surrender. I'm going to take care of you. And I remember hearing that after the fact, and I started thinking, that sounds good, but you don't have a job. You don't have any, you don't have any money to pay rent. How are you going to buy food? And I literally was afraid for her and was fearful that now the church was going to have to find some way to take care of this situation. And then I watched God. I watched God provide. And over the years, give her a house, give a car, take care of this, provide medically, provide this way, provide that way. And I watched miracle after miracle after miracle. And you realize there are no miracles until you step out in faith and trust God. Mark chapter 11, verse 22 through 24 says this. Have faith in God. Truly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will come to pass, it will be done for him. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you've received it and it will be yours. God has set up the universe that there are certain laws we know the laws of gravity, we know the laws of nature, but there's a higher law, it's called the law of faith. And the law of faith, you saw Jesus, he could walk on water because he had of his faith. He could cast out demons, he could heal the sick. He could multiply fish and loaves because the law of faith is a higher law. There's things that we need to see God move into. And I honestly believe this is a time when God wants to move powerfully. But we've got to be willing to move by faith. We've got to be willing to trust what he's saying to us. What mountain do you need to see moved in your life? What mountain is there? The way through it is by faith. Getting God's perspective. This is a divine reset. God is wanting to reset our lives. We're needing to begin to say, I don't have to live in the bondages, the mindsets, the ways of the past. God, I want to hear from you. If you're not seeing many miracles in your life, then maybe you need to start asking God, where is the first step of faith you can take? What is the first step you can take to begin to move that you're not walking by sight, but you're walking by faith? Third, faith can be increased. When you walk by faith, your faith will grow. If you're not walking by faith, your faith will diminish. It will get weak. Romans 12, 3 says, God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. God has given to each one of us a measure of faith. Every believer has a measure of faith. And that faith grows according to what you do with it. A lot of people have done with their faith what the the parable the man and the talents did with his talent. They don't use it, so it doesn't grow. 
The Bible says faith grows by doing two things, feeding it on the word of God and exercising it by putting it into practice. That's the only way faith grows. You've got to feed it on his word and then you've got to act on it. If you'll feed it and act on it, faith will grow. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Jesus is telling us there's a way your body's fed and there's a way your faith is fed. The way you feed your body is you eat food. The way you feed your, your faith inside of you is the word of God. We've been encouraging, challenging, saying we need to be in the word of God. I'm telling you right now, if you're in the word of God, he will release something to you that will begin to give you a seed of faith. That seed of faith will begin to help you begin to move into the things that God has for you, into the way you're going to get answers and things you need in this situation. But you've got to be in the word or there's no faith coming into you. And then not only do you need to have the word coming in, but then you need to act on the faith. If you eat, but you don't exercise, your muscles get flabby. You feel weak. You feel tired. If you begin to hear things from God and not act on them, then you begin to realize that your, your faith is growing weak. You don't have the strength to stand. And I'm saying to you, God knows how to take the word and to speak specifically the faith you need to ignite something in you. He knows how to speak, that he's showing you the mountains in front of you. That's not too difficult. If I could do that, I can handle your situation. But you, then you've got to say, God, how do I move in that? How do I act on that? And God begins to show you, stand here, trust me, believe this, begin to pray that. He begins to show you what to do. And what are you doing? That faith starts to grow. You see it in the Bible. It talks about in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. He says, your faith grows exceedingly. In Luke 12, it says, you have little faith. In Matthew 8, it says, you, I've never seen such great faith in all of Israel. In Romans 4, it talks about your faith is strong. The Bible's telling us your faith can be weak. It can be strong. It can be little. It can be great. It can be full. It can be half. It's your determination. What are you doing with the faith you've been given are you feeding it on God's word? If we're going to walk by faith, we need the word of God daily. We don't need little snacks. We need the word of God coming into us. And we need to practice it, walk it out. Amen. I say to you, friends of God, I say to you, we need to begin to feed our faith so they can grow stronger. This is not a time where we need to be trying to walk by sight, manage our lives, figure out our problems. We need to be diving deeper into faith. Fourth, faith brings us into destiny, into alignment to God's will and purpose. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 says, Now, all glory to God who is able through the mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. I say to you, there is much more to your life than you imagine. Because we walk by sight, because the enemy speaks a negative narrative, we diminish ourselves. We diminish our calling. We diminish what God wants to do through us. When we begin to come in faith, God begins to speak things. Not because we're great, but because he's great. And he wants to do great things through our lives. Infinitely more than we even think. He chose you. He appointed you for a reason. He wants to do things. And in this divine reset, this is a wake-up call for the church to rise up. God does not want to see darkness keep advancing out there. He wants to see his purposes rising. You have no concept of all that he wants to do or how to get in line with it or what he wants to build. So we need to begin to move in faith. As we do that, God will begin to align us. How did people accomplish the purposes of God in the Bible? By faith. Abraham obeyed God and was, went to the place that he was called by faith. By faith, Joseph fulfilled God's purpose in Egypt. By faith, Moses considered the reproach of Christ greater than the wealth of Egypt. By faith, they conquered Kizan. By faith, they endured injustice. By faith, they withstood persecution. By faith, they were made strong and weak. By faith, they shook nations. It's by faith. God created us for a purpose. And it's as we begin to walk in faith that he's going to bring us into that purpose. There's no other way to get to the purpose other than walking by faith. Fifth, faith gives us the power to hold on in tough times. Faith does not take us away from problems. It takes us through problems. Many times, I think, for some reason, we have kind of a fairy tale view of how God works. Like he just comes and waves a wand and all of a sudden we're in, you know, on 
in this great, where no problems exist. That's heaven. That's heaven. We're not in heaven yet. He told us on this earth, you will face trials. You will face challenges. You will be attacked by an enemy who's a roaring lion seeking to devour you. You will find your flesh warring against you. He told us all those things. But he says, as you trust me, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll take you through the trial. He said, I, the pain doesn't go away, but I'll give you the grace to walk through the pain. Many times we don't realize faith is what gives us the courage to face the challenge. Isaiah 43 verses 1 through 3 says this. But now thus says the Lord, he, ha he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. Though through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. And the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. He's saying, you're going to walk through challenges. You're going to face some difficult days. Some things are going to shake. Some things are going to be scary. But I'm not leaving. I'll be there. I'll give you everything you need. And as you keep your eyes on me, as you trust in me, as you put your focus on me, I will release grace. I will release strength. I will release wisdom. I will release the, everything you need to walk through this. You really understand something. It's going through the trials that we change. It's going through the trials that God causes us to know him more deeply. It's in the trials that we realize how big he is, how strong he is, how perfect his love is. It's in the trials that he refines things in us that we realize we're hindering the fullness of our calling. It's in the trials that he prepares you to stand up on a platform one day and speak forth a word that releases other people from prisons they're in. It's through the trials that he builds faith. It's through the trials that you encounter him. It's through the trials that he reveals himself to other people through your life. I pray so much that the church would begin to get a heart to show the glory of God to the world out there because they don't want to see church. They don't want cliches or little quotes on the social media. They want to see the reality of a life lived by trusting God. One of the things I've seen in my job is I've seen everybody I know go through really hard things, but I've seen some rise up and they become stronger. Some go down and they become diminished because of how they walk through the trial. I mean, some pity themselves, feel, you know, feel like a victim. Everybody's against me. They listen and they walk by sight and they let the negative stuff consume them. And they lose heart. They give up. They believe they're inadequate. They believe they can't do it. They believe there's no hope. So they do exactly like the Israelites. They blame God, they grumble, they complain, and they walk away. And there's other people that face them. People are un unjust to them. People hurt them, betray them. They face difficult situations. They have to go, but they trust God. They hold on to God. They believe God. And God tells them, I'm making you a fighter. So you're going to stand for me. God's telling them, believe me and trust me. I've got a future for you. I'm taking you to the next level. I've got, I will take care of your family. I will not leave you or forsake you. I surround you with unfailing love. I want to be your father in the midst of this situation. He speaks these words and they hold on to him and they trust him. There's times they're really beaten down, but they turn into him and they begin to rise and rise and rise and rise. It's all, are we going to walk by sight? Are we going to walk by faith? Are we going to get God's perspective? Or are we going to listen to this negative one and give in to that? It's a determiner. And I'm saying to you, you're, you're at a crossroads and you got to make a choice. So I, want to, I want to ask you for two things. If you have never asked Jesus into your life, you never, you don't know if you've ever released your heart and your life to him to forgive you of your sin and to bring you into his family. I want you to hit that place that says, I want to commit my life to Jesus. Hit that button. We want to pray with you. We want that to actually happen for you right now. That's your first step of faith. It doesn't matter if your parents were Christians. It doesn't matter if you grew up around a church. What I'm asking, has you ever placed your faith in Jesus? Do that right now. Don't wait. Don't worry if anybody else, if you have to go to the computer, hit it right now. Acknowledge Jesus, 
I take my first step of faith, come into my life. Forgive me of my sin and lead me forward. Some of you may be watching with other people and you weren't even planning on watching this, but you're not here by accident. God wants you to take that first step of faith. So go and hit that button. Others of you, you have been hearing, listening, but you've not made a conscious choice to not just walk through this and wait for it to pass. You've not made a choice to take hold of Jesus and to do everything he shows you because you want to walk this by faith. I want you to come today and don't just hear the word, act on it. And I want you to say, I want to ask one of the staff of Focal Point to pray with me because I don't want to go down walking by sight. I don't want to do this out of my limited human's perspective and wisdom. I want God to open my eyes so that I can see the things he has for me, so that I can begin to get his perspective and I can begin to rise and go forward in this. And I'm asking you, don't just hear the word, act on it. How do you move by faith? You have to act on it. Ask someone, will you pray with me right now? Because I don't want to be the same. I don't want to stay on the same track. I've listened for weeks and I've not changed my course. I need help. Will you pray with me so that I can begin to go into the fullness of what God has? Will you do that? Will you make a decision right now? It is a step of faith. That very step will open something so that faith can begin to flow. Amen. Let's pray. Father, right now, we want to ask for prayer. We want to ask for live prayer, that someone can begin to go off privately and pray with us through this and that we can acknowledge to you, I hear you and I'm responding, God. I'm not putting you off. I'm not delaying my obedience. I am responding. Some people here have been a Christian a long time. But they are stressed and they are strained and they're uptight and they're fretting. They're not walking this by faith. And right now, I'm praying for you to ask for prayer. To ask for someone to pray with you so that you can begin to get out of the trap of anxiety and walking by sight and to come and ask God for the grace and the help to walk by faith and get his perspective in the midst of all of this. Father, we want to be led. We want to see with the eye, the spiritual eyes. We want to see the words, the perspective, the wisdom, the grace, the keys, the other many things you can give us so that we can go through this and rise up. We love you. We praise you. We do not want to be the same. We want to be useful for your purposes and we want to see the kingdom of God advance upon the earth. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We love you all. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you for joining us for our online worship service. We hope that you had a wonderful time worshiping with us. If you would like to give, go to our website, focalpointchurch.com, and click on the Give button. To connect with others and get involved in our growth groups, click on the Growth Group tab on our website. Because growth groups are the life and heart of Focal Point Church, and we would love to care for you through one of our groups. And check out our website for the resources on our spiritual growth initiative. God bless you and have a great week.